Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Today we're going to take a look at some of the news making the rounds in the space launch industry. Blue Origin has been rehearsing launches with company executives on board and winning one government contract while losing another to SpaceX. SpaceX has been prepping Starship SN15 for their next flight attempt and are also readying their Dragon spacecraft for the Crew-2 mission to the ISS. Tim Dodd and Jack Bayer were featured in a CNN article about their permanent presence in Boca Chica to follow SpaceX development of Starship. Let's get started. First up, we have a couple of stories out of Camp Bezos and the folks over at Blue Origin. On Wednesday of last week, Blue Origin had four executives board their new Shepard rocket prior to their 15th test of this flight system. Before you ask why they are launching executives rather than astronauts, they didn't actually launch anyone. Fifteen minutes prior to launch, after completing some walkthroughs and comms checks, all four execs exited the vehicle. Fifteen minutes later, New Shepard took to the skies with another successful launch, separation, parachute deployment, and touchdown. Blue Origin stated that having the execs on board for the pre-flight checks helps them get one step closer to human flight. They definitely seem to be sticking to their motto of step-by-step -step ferociously. I'm considering giving Jeff Bezos the nickname of Baby Steps Bezos. Let me know in the comments if you think that's appropriate. Continuing on the topic of Blue Origin, the company also won a $2.5 million defense contract this week. According to PCMag, the DARPA contract tasked Blue Origin with creating a prototype nuclear-powered spacecraft that can make it to low Earth orbit by 2025. This isn't the first time we've heard of nuclear propulsion being used in the rocket industry. This idea was being tossed around as far back as the 1950s, when NASA was pursuing the possibility of nuclear propulsion with their Orion program. Unfortunately, at the time, it was just not feasible, but it's certainly exciting to see this being explored again. Both Blue Origin and Lockheed Martin will be independently developing spacecraft to be used with the nuclear propulsion concept, while General Atomics will be developing the propulsion system itself. Personally, I'm super excited to see the designs they come up with and wish everyone involved the best of luck. Our next stories are from Dogecoin supporter himself, Elon Musk, and his well-known company, SpaceX. On Friday, NASA announced the winner of its Lunar Lander contest worth $2.9 billion. SpaceX was chosen over both Blue Origin and Dianetics, whose competing designs were quite compelling, but in the end, apparently not compelling enough. SpaceX put forth a design for the Lunar Lander that is essentially a variant of their Starship launch system, which has already been in design and testing for some time. For those of you who follow the launch industry, you'll know that SpaceX has test flown four Starship prototypes to date, with three of them ending in an immediate fireball, and a fourth completing a landing, but only to subsequently explode minutes later. That doesn't sound promising on the face of it, but in actuality, they are doing quite well. If you want more information on why, feel free to check out my recent video covering the topic. The SpaceX Lunar Lander will be the first spacecraft carrying humans to the moon since the Apollo program, and even more inspiring, it will carry the first woman to the moon. In my opinion, NASA chose SpaceX over the competition due to the short timeline they have set for themselves and the fact that SpaceX already has a similar variant of the prototype making regular test flights. And speaking of regular test flights of Starship, SpaceX has rolled SN15 out to the pad at Boca Chica and are targeting a test flight as early as Monday the 19th. As mentioned previously, this would be the fifth test flight of a Starship prototype. Previous Pathfinders SN8, 9, 10, and 11 did all end with a rapid unscheduled disassembly, but SpaceX was able to garner a massive amount of valuable data from these previous flights. Noteworthy of this upcoming test is the fact that SpaceX has skipped serial numbers 12, 13, and 14. SN15 is a newer design of the prototype, and while we don't have information on exactly what changes have been made to this newer version, in a response on Twitter, Elon stated that it has hundreds of design improvements across structures, avionics, engines, and software. Elon is hopeful one of these many improvements will be the key to finally having a Starship that can be inspected after flight rather than picked up by a front loader in pieces and dropped in a dumpster. 
Either way, I'm very excited to see SN15 fly and very much hope that they target a liftoff later in the day so that the flight is visible unlike SN11 was due to fog in Boca Chica. Another SpaceX launch that I'm looking forward to is the upcoming Crew-2 mission. Crew-2 will actually be the fourth flight of their Crew Dragon spacecraft to the ISS and the third of which to carry humans. According to Space.com, Crew-2 is scheduled for liftoff Thursday the 22nd at 6.11 a.m. EDT from historic Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Crew-2 will carry NASA astronauts Megan MacArthur and Shane Kimbrough, as well as Japanese astronaut Akiko Hoshide and Francis Thomas Piquet. I hope I pronounced those right. After a 24-hour cab ride in Dragon, when Crew-2 successfully docks at the ISS, it will mark the first time two commercial crew spacecraft are docked simultaneously. We wish Crew-2 the best of luck and look forward to watching them ride Falcon 9's Pillar of Fire on Thursday morning. To round this week up, we have a story about two absolute icons who cover the space launch industry and keep us all up to date on what SpaceX has going on in Boca Chica. CNN featured an article earlier this month about the growth of space launch enthusiasts shacking up at Boca Chica to cover the development of Starship. Featured in the article were both Jack Bayer of NASA Spaceflight and Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut. These two, along with many more, initially traveled to Boca Chica with the intention of covering SpaceX launches of their new Starship prototype, but ended up staying. Tim now has a semi-permanent set at Boca Chica where he live streams Starship launches. This is something Tim had done from time to time with other launches in the past, but never on a permanent basis like this. Tim is able to do this thanks to all of the generous donations he receives from his viewers, as well as his Patreon supporters and his online merchandise store, linked below. Everyone who has interest in being able to watch SpaceX develop Starship owes both Tim and Jack a huge thanks for what they do. Also very much worth mentioning is the fact that there are some fabulous creators beyond just Tim and Jack who cover the daily goings-on at Boca Chica. Somehow, if you manage to stumble upon my tiny little channel without knowing all of these folks, you may want to create a new YouTube account because your algorithms are all kinds of f***ed up. Huge thanks to all of them for what they do. These people are the reason why I decided to start covering space news on this channel since the climate in tech and PCs is currently so demolished due to pricing and availability at the moment. And that's going to do it for this one. I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and consider getting subscribed. Let me know down in the comments if you think SpaceX will be successful with their SN15 test flight or if you think it will also end in a rapid unscheduled disassembly like the previous flights. Feel free to check out some of my other content on the space launch industry or even some of my computer and tech videos if you're into that. If you have any specific topics you would like me to cover in the future, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.